Hey folks, this is Kalani. Welcome back to the Antorus Raid Guide for Normal and Heroic. This time we'll be looking at the Antoran High Command. During this encounter you'll be facing three bosses, which all share a health pool, but you will only fight one at a time. The other two will be hiding safely in their command pods, which provide them with extra abilities. The easiest way to think about this fight is in three phases, which continually rotate. To start with, you'll be actively fighting Admiral Sphirax. After 90 seconds, she'll hop in her pod, and Chief Engineer Ishkar will pop out of his, so he will be a target for the next 90 seconds until he jumps back into his pod, and General Eridus will become your next target. 90 seconds later, he'll get back into his pod, and the Admiral will come back into the fray. You'll want to tank the active boss near the next boss's pod so you can quickly pick up the new boss and DPS can instantly start doing damage, so you'll want to be constantly cycling around the room. Whenever the bosses are outside of a pod, they only ever use one shared ability called Exploit Weakness. This deals a large amount of damage in a frontal cone and applies a debuff which increases physical damage you take for 20 seconds. Your tanks need to face the bosses away from the raid at all times and tank swap when they get two stacks. During the first phase, while fighting the Admiral, the other two bosses will be in their pods. Every boss in a command pod will constantly cast Chaos Pulse at random targets, which deals damage over time and applies a debuff which increases the damage you take by up to 15%. This debuff can be dispelled, but for the most part it can be safely ignored until you get into the later stages of the fight, where the raid will be taking a lot of AoE damage, so make sure the debuffs aren't allowed to stack too high. While in his pod, the Chief Engineer will spawn a whole bunch of Entropic Mines in the encounter area. These mines will arm after a short delay, and if any player runs within 6 yards of them, the mines will explode, dealing damage to the player and applying a large damage over time effect to the entire raid. You have to avoid these mines as much as possible. While in his pod, General Eridus will be summoning reinforcements. You will have one Fanatical Pyromancer and two Fell Blade Shock Troopers spawn periodically. The Fanatical Pyromancer will target random players and cast Pyroblast, which deals a huge amount of damage and should always be interrupted. The Shock Troopers will charge one of the three furthest players and then start to Blade Storm back towards your tanks. Just make sure you're not standing in a Blade Storm and you should be fine. The Pyromancer needs to die as soon as possible, and the Shock Troopers need to die before another set of ads spawn to make sure you don't get overwhelmed. The interesting part of this fight lies in that extra unmanned command pod. Any member of your raid can hop into the command pods which don't have a boss inside and take control of some special abilities. While a player is inside a command pod they will be taking damage over time, which increases the longer they stay in the pod. You can stay in a pod for around 45 seconds before you instantly die, so make sure you leave after about 40 seconds. Seeing as each phase lasts 90 seconds, two people can control the pod without dying in each phase. On heroic mode, the only difference is that after you leave a command pod, you will gain a debuff which prevents you from controlling another command pod for 3 minutes. This will mean you need to assign two people to use the pods during one of the three phases. By the time a group's assigned phases come around, they should no longer have their debuff, so two players for phase 1 pods, two players for phase 2 pods, and two players for phase 3 pods. Each pod has one shared ability, which is Chaos Pulse, which you should be firing at the current active boss as often as possible to stack up that 15% damage increase buff. The Admiral's Command Pod special ability is Withering Fire, which deals damage in an area and also applies a debuff to any demon adds, increasing the damage they take by 25% for 10 seconds. You'll want to make sure this at least hits the Pyromancers, but if you can hit all three adds, that would be ideal. After 90 seconds, you'll enter Phase 2, where you'll be fighting the Chief Engineer. Because he is no longer in his pod, you won't have to deal with more mines spawning during this time, but General Eridus will continue to spawn adds. Admiral's Command Pod will start using its special ability, Fusillade, which deals a lot of raid-wide damage and applies a debuff called Zeroing In, which increases the damage of future Fusillades by 25%. This debuff stacks and is actually somewhat of a soft enrage, as you will need to kill the High Command before the Fusillades start one-shotting your raid members. Thankfully, the Engineer's Command Pod is now available for you to commandeer. As well as providing the Chaos Pulse ability, you will also be able to spawn Fell Shield Emitters, which throws down an interactable object at your desired location. You'll want to use this ability on cooldown to get as many emitters out as possible, because when one of these emitters is used, it will provide your raid with a massive shield which prevents 50% of incoming fire damage. You'll need to assign one player to use these emitters just before the Fusillade ability goes off, so your raid can survive the huge AoE damage. 
The player inside the engineer's pod will need to spawn three emitters at your raid's current location, and then three more emitters at the next boss's pod. You get three fusillades per phase, one every 30 seconds or so, and you won't have access to the engineer's pod for the next phase, but those fusillades will continue to fire. You need to have three more shields prepped and ready for the next phase, otherwise you're going to die. During the third phase, you will be targeting General Eridus, and because he is no longer in his pod, you won't have any ads during this time, but the Chief Engineer will start spawning his mines again. You will also have those fusillades to deal with, so make sure to use the prepared shield emitters at the correct time, and you should have no problems. The General's Command Pod will become available to your raid and has the unique ability to summon Disruptor Beacons. These beacons last for 7 seconds and will interrupt enemy spellcasting, and they also destroy any entropic mines within 12 yards. The interrupting should already be covered by your raid, so make sure the players in the general's pods are using those beacons to clear as many of the mines in the room as possible. By this time you're probably hurting for space, so making the most out of those beacons will give your raid way more room to work with. After 90 seconds in phase 3, you'll rotate right around to the first phase, and you'll keep going until either the boss dies or your raid falls over. Make sure to keep that Chaos Pulse debuff up as much as possible, and make good use of the Command Pod special abilities, and you should be fine. So that's all you need to take down Antoran High Command on Normal and Heroic. Be sure to check out the other boss guides so you're well prepared going into Antorus. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.